the youngest among them, 20-year-old Desmond O'Neill. He was intent on covering D-Day. Like his colleagues, he had been made a sergeant, the ideal rank to stay close to the men. My camera was welcome, it distracted them, he would say later. On May the 27th, his fellow soldiers were introduced to a new currency, the French francs printed by the Allies, much to the anger of General Charles de Gaulle. He saw it as a breach of French sovereignty, since only France should be allowed to print or mint its money. But for the moment, he was kept out of the loop and had little idea of what was being planned. These men knew they had a good chance of being killed, and that created a strange mood, O'Neill would remark. Another army cameraman was 27-year-old Sergeant Ian Grant. Always wearing his Scottish beret, he had chosen the film corps to escape from chores and to immortalize his brothers in arms. On May the 31st, Grant filmed them receiving the booklet informing them about the country they would soon be invading. It was in that camp that we first found our target was Normandy, he would say later. He also filmed the few extra rations being handed out to the men as they were readying to face the worst. For it was now a matter of days. On June the 1st, Norman Clegg, a cameraman who sadly left us only his clapperboard, filmed the final instructions given to his company. He filmed from above, as if he were already taking risks. But in fact, it was so as not to reveal where his fellow soldiers would be landing. Even they had little idea where in Normandy Wiesterham was. Everything was still top secret, the reason they had been kept in perfect isolation for the past two weeks. From now on, the cards had been dealt for Clegg and his fellow cameramen as they headed to the ports and the start of their great adventure.